This is a tutorial for the Hydraulic Conductivity Lab of the Geotechnical Engineering course CIV-E 3208. The purpose of this lab is to determine the hydraulic conductivity of a soil sample. Hydraulic conductivity is a property of the soil which determines the rate water will pass through it. It is important to be able to know how to measure hydraulic conductivity as it is a factor in applications like dam and landfill design. There are two types of hydraulic conductivity tests the constant head test for coarse grain soil like sand and gravel, and the falling head test for fine grain soil like silt and clay. This is the apparatus for the constant head test. Connected to this reservoir are three lines. An intake, which is connected to a tap and will keep filling our reservoir. A discharge line, which will take extra water out of the reservoir and keep the water level constant. And a line with a valve, which connects to the test cylinder. First obtain about 1 kg of coarse soil and place it in a container. This should be enough to fill the test cylinder. Record the mass of the container plus the soil in a table. Place a screen at the bottom of the cylinder. This prevents the soil from being carried out. Fill the cylinder with the soil sample. Split the soil into about 3 layers and compact each layer with a hammer, like this. If your objective is to determine the conductivity at a specific density, Measure the mass required given the volume of the cylinder and compact the sample enough so that it completely fills the cylinder. The top surface of the soil in the cylinder should be level with a small space for the screen and end cap. Place the screen on top of the soil as well as a separator. Next place the cap on top of the cylinder and secure it with three screws like this. Record the mass of the container plus the remaining soil. Connect the intake line from the reservoir to the barb at the top of the test cylinder. And connect the tubes for the two manometers to the two outlets on the side. These are for measuring pore water pressure at specific points. Before filling the reservoir, close the valve on the intake for the test cylinder. Turn on the tap and let the reservoir fill up. Once the level of water in the reservoir reaches a certain level, it will start to discharge into the sink. When this happens, the level of water is constant, and we can begin the test. Now open the valve to let water into the sample. Before we start measuring flow rate, we need to let water run through the sample. This is to remove any trapped air. Let the water run through the system for a few minutes. Here we can see the poor water pressure being recorded on the two manometers. Now we can start measuring water flow rate. Take a beaker like this one, then measure and record its mass in the table. We'll be using this stopwatch to record the time. Simultaneously start the stopwatch and begin filling the beaker with the discharge from the test cylinder. Here we are aiming to collect about 300 milliliters of water. Simultaneously stop the stopwatch and remove the discharge. Now record the mass of the water plus the beaker as well as the time it took to fill in seconds. Empty the water and zero the stopwatch to reset. Repeat this test two more times, each time aiming for a different amount of water. Before we finish, we need to calculate the head applied to the sample. To do this, measure the total head at each manometer from the base of the cylinder. Here, the head height of the top manometer is 49.8 centimeters, and 11.3 centimeters for the bottom manometer. Finally, record the difference in height between the outlets to the two manometers. You can draw a line around the outside to help you do this. In our case, this was 16 centimeters. We can now clean up the apparatus and proceed to the calculations. Calculate the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. To do this, take calipers and measure the diameter. From this, we get the cross-sectional area, as the section is circular. The coefficient of permeability for the constant head test is given by this equation, where Q is the volume of water collected, L is the sample height, A is the cross-sectional area of the soil specimen, H is the total constant head which is the difference in head between the two manometers, and T is the duration of water collection. Calculate K for each of your three tests. 
And finally, calculate the average of these three to get the final value for conductivity. For the falling head test, first we need to put together the test cylinder. Unlike with the constant head test which uses a screen, the falling head test uses a porous stone. Place the porous stone on the base like this. Now place the tube which acts as the cylinder's walls over top of it. Then thread the end cap with a hole in it onto the three protruding screws. Secure it with three nuts. This is to create a tight seal. Now obtain a soil sample. Similarly to the constant head test, measure out approximately one kilogram of soil into a container and record the mass of the container plus soil. Place the soil in the test cylinder like this. Again, compacting the soil into about three layers. In this experiment, we are using a fine-grained sand, although this test is best done with silts or clays. Level the soil at the top of the cylinder. Place the second porous stone on top of it, and then thread the end cap on, securing it like this. Finally, record the mass of the soil container plus the unused soil. The cylinder for the falling head test consists of just one line connected to the test cylinder. Connect the line to the cylinder. Before we can start the test, we must saturate the soil with water. There are three valves in the system. Make sure they are all open. Start adding water to the top of the stand pipe. A larger funnel can help you do this more easily. As you can see here, water will start moving into the test cylinder and saturating the sample. When water starts coming out of the nozzle at the bottom, as you can see here, we can proceed. If there are bubbles in the pipe, gradually add more water to the system so that the air can be flushed out. Close the valve at the top of the test cylinder so that the water level in the pipe remains constant. If there is water left in the funnel, open and close the valve so that the level of water in the pipe falls to a measurable level. For the first test, Use a stopwatch to record the time it takes for the water to drop a certain distance. Start the stopwatch and open the valve simultaneously. Wait for the water level in the pipe to drop a given distance. Close the valve and stop the stopwatch simultaneously when the new level is reached. Record both levels of water as well as the time in seconds it took for the water level to drop. If the water level is too low, add more. Repeat this test two more times for three readings in all. This is the equation for the coefficient of permeability when performing the falling head test. Lowercase a is the cross-sectional area of the stand pipe. The internal diameter is given to us as 6.6 .6 millimeters. From this, we get the area. L is the length of the soil column. In our case, the length of the column is 16 centimeters. Uppercase a is the cross-sectional area of the soil column. In our case, the diameter of the cylinder is 6.3 centimeters. Therefore, the cross-sectional area is 31.2 square centimeters. T is the length of time taken for the head to drop. H0 and H1 are the total head before and after each test, respectively. Calculate K for each test. Finding the average value of K between all three of our tests gives us the hydraulic conductivity. This concludes the falling head test and the hydraulic conductivity lab.